What's up traders? In today's video lesson, I will be showing you how to enter a trade using smart money concepts. So stay tuned. Now, in last week's video, we took a little bit of a deep dive and we explained how to identify um, liquidity. I go really in depth in explaining what liquidity is, how it applies to us as traders and how it is used to help us find those high probability setups. So if you haven't already, I highly suggest that you go ahead and you watch that particular video. All right. Now, if you've watched any of the previous lessons, you'll be very familiar with this particular markup. This is a simplified smart money concept setup. Essentially, every day when trading the markets, we are looking for this particular scenario to develop. And then we're looking for a high probability zone to continue with that underlying trend. Okay. Now we have touched on break of structure. We have discussed the premium and discount, a very simple tool that will help increase your win rates. We've discussed how to mark out your external structure swing points and how the change of character can help with identifying those swing points. We have also spoken about liquidity. And today I want us to discuss how to actually enter a trade when these particular concepts all join together to give you a high probability setup. All right. Now, first and foremost, what, what is important is you need to understand the type of trader you are. Are you a swing trader or are you an intraday trader? Now, me personally, I like to swing trade, um, but I do go for intraday setups as well as and when they present themselves. So typically the time frames that I use are these ones here. So my higher time frame will be my daily and my four hour. I only look at my daily at the start of the week um, and then towards the end of the week, just to make sure that I am still following that overall picture. But the, the time frame that I look at every single day for my overall direction would be my four hour. Okay. My mid time frame will be my one hour. And then my lower time frame will be my 15 minute. Now, the reason it is important for you to know what type of trader you are is because your time frames will help you identify where it is that you want to see your lower time frame change of character. So if you are an intraday trader and let's say you look to get in and out of the market before the end of a trading session, your, your higher time frame might be your one hour, your mid time frame might be your 15 minute, and then your lower time frame could then be that one minute. All right. The entry models that we're going to be discussing in this particular video can be applied to either approach, whether you are a swing trader or whether you're an intraday trader. As long as you know what your higher time frame is, what your mid time frame is, and what your lower time frame is, you will be able to apply these particular entry models, right? So as you can see, once price action pulls into your discounted pricing, when you are looking to trade bullish, you want to wait for an interaction or a mitigation of a higher time frame or a mid time frame demand zone. So in this case, we're waiting for a interaction with this one hour demand zone. Once price action trades into that one hour demand zone, we then drop down to our lower time frame, which is our 15 minute. And then we will look for a change of character or one of the following entry models, which we'll be discussing shortly before entering that long trade. All right. Obviously, once a particular entry model has been set, uh, has been confirmed, we can then target the weak high in terms of this overall setup. Why? Because this particular weak high would have failed to create a new low. And therefore, there's a high, a high chance that it will get taken at some point. Okay. Now, the very first entry model that we're going to be discussing is the change of character entry model. So as you can see, we have our one hour demand zone in here and we can see that this pullback 
of price has now traded into that one hour demand zone. So what are we looking for with this particular entry model? What we want to see is we want to see a valid lower time frame. In this case, we want to see a valid 15 minute change of character. Okay. To occur within our demand zone, which will confirm that a new low has been printed. And then we can then start looking for entry opportunities on our way out of the zone after our 15 minute change of character has occurred. So as you can see in here, price action trades into the, into the demand zone. We have our valid 15 minute change of character because we have a break to the downside immediately followed by a break to the upside, which confirms our change of character. And what will happen then is we will have our first opportunity in here after the change of character to get long in the market. All right. Now, when we are looking for these opportunities to get long in the market, you do need to realize that we still want to see a valid break of structure, which in this case would be the 15 minute change of character. All right. We still want to see price action pull back towards an area of value. So if you think of it this way, this is my swing low. This is my swing high of internal structure. And there's my break of structure. That means that this is the particular leg that we're playing within. OK, so this particular point will be regarded as a weak high. OK, and if we bring on our fib tool essentially what we're looking for is we're looking for price action on the lower time frame now to pull back into discount pricing and then we want to look for an entry at a demand level down here okay so this particular demand zone which would be a 15 minute it could even be a one minute loan zone this particular demand zone would be your first opportunity to get involved in the market. Now it is important to note that this first opportunity, which forms immediately after your change of character will be your riskier option purely because a lot of times your change of character can fail, right? So sometimes you'll see price action push up and it will give, it will print what you would think is a change of character, but instead of continuing higher, what price action would do is would actually break lower to give you another break of structure to the downside. And then all this particular move would have done is this particular move would have just liquidated an area of um, liquidity that sat internally and it would have tapped into a level of supply somewhere up here to then continue price action down. All right. So your first entry opportunity will always be a little bit riskier purely because you are looking to enter immediately after the change of character has occurred. All right. Now, if you want to wait for some extra confirmation instead of entering immediately after your change of character, and we did discuss this in the change of character video, you can wait for a secondary break of structure in here because remember change of all change of character is is a break of structure right the only reason we call it a change of character is because it is the first break of structure that signals the possibility of a change in trend okay and that's why we use it to confirm swing lows and swing highs so if you want to wait for some extra confirmation with this particular entry model, you can wait for a secondary break of structure to occur. And this would give you some extra confidence that this is indeed the confirmed low and that we can now look for entries going higher. So what you would then do is after your secondary break of structure has occurred, you can then look for price to pull back into a level of demand that has formed during this leg because remember after price action breaks structure here right you have a break of structure you have a new internal high coming from this internal low which means that you are now playing within this particular leg yes and all you're looking for is you're just waiting for price action to pull back into and let me actually let me actually change the color of this you're looking for price action to pull back into discount pricing here 
of this leg before trading higher, all right? So notice how this particular simplified smart money concept setup can be utilized when looking for that change of character within your mid to higher time frame mitigation, all right? Because all we're looking for is, we're looking for price action to break structure, we're waiting for a pullback, and then we want to trade from an area of value, all right? And that is exactly what, that is exactly what we're doing here. We're looking for price action to break structure here, right? We've got our change of character. We're looking for a break of structure here. And then we're waiting for price action to pull back to an area of value before continuing higher, okay? Now, the secondary break of structure will give you a second opportunity that is a little safer to trade from. However, what you will notice in live market conditions is that price action won't always pull back after that secondary break of structure, okay? A lot of times, once you've gotten your change of character after that mitigation, you will see price action pull back and then a lot of volume will step into the market and you won't always get a deep enough retracement for you to get involved in the market. And all that will happen is price action will stop short of mitigating your preferred demand zone and price action will just continue on, right? And all that will happen is this particular level will remain unmitigated with some imbalance in here, right? And this particular level might then become a, a reactionary point further along in price, all right? So this is our chalk entry model, the change of character entry model. If you apply this particular entry model and you backtest it, you will find that this entry model is all you need to be profitable in the markets, right? Especially if you ensure that you're only trading from high value areas. So either discount pricing in a, in a bullish trend or premium pricing in a bearish trend, all right? Now, the second entry model that I would like to show you guys is something I like to call the FTC entry model. Now, FTC stands for fails to create, all right? So we have the same scenario. Price action is trading down into a one hour demand zone. And we are obviously waiting for some form of confirmation that price has now respected this demand zone and that we've seen a change in trend to continue with the underlying bullish trend that we spoke about earlier, right? Now, with the fails to create entry model, this particular entry model will help you when you don't have a clearly defined change of character as I like to define it. So for a clearly defined change of character, what you want to see is you want to see price break structure to the downside and then immediately break structure to the upside before continuing higher, all right? With this particular entry model, what we'll see is as price action pushes down, right, you have an initial break of structure to the downside. Price action then pulls up and forms a new internal lower high, right? But then this internal lower high fails to create a new lower low. Instead, what this particular high does is, what this internal high does is, it pushes down, fails to break this low, and then price action goes ahead to, to violate it, all right? So this particular low will then be classified as a low that has failed to do its job. It has failed to create a new low. Once that low is violated, then you have your 15 minute change of character, all right? So if I show you guys again on the change of character entry model, what you're looking for is you're looking for a break of structure to the downside immediately followed by a break of structure to the upside to confirm your change of character, okay? However, with the FTC entry model, you don't get your break of structure to the downside immediately followed by your break of structure to the upside. The break of structure to the upside, which would be here, only occurs much later, okay? What happens with this entry model instead is you have an internal lower high which fails to create a new lower low, right? It stops shy of creating a new lower low. 
and it is violated almost immediately after it fails. And then that then becomes your 15 minute change of character. Okay. So once you understand this particular entry model, everything else remains the same because you have your 15 minute change of character. Okay which then gives rise to your first entry opportunity. Obviously, because this is the first demand zone that forms after a change of character, it is regarded as a riskier um, entry opportunity because there is a chance that price action just pushes down lower. So if you don't want to trade that particular first opportunity, you can wait for a secondary break of structure to give you a second opportunity that that has a little bit more confirmation that this indeed has changed character and then you can look to trade longs from here all right what you'll notice with the ftc entry model is that your secondary break of structure actually ends up violating highs on the way down as well which then gives it just a little bit more um, confirmation just a little bit more confidence that indeed this would be a high probability zone for us to trade from all right now understand also that you can look to trade the first opportunity right because if the first opportunity does indeed end up playing out okay and it leads to another break of structure you can then look to scale into your position with the secondary opportunity okay However, you need to make sure that that scaling opportunity fits a dynamic risk management strategy so that you don't just go ahead and risk too much of your account on what you believe to be a confirmed bullish um, change of character. All right. So that is our FTC entry model. It's a different way of identifying your change of character, because as I said, you won't always get the immediate break of structure to the downside immediately followed by the break of structure to the upside because in this case you can see that as it is defined with the change of character entry model your your break of structure to the upside only occurs much later all right but this would then help us identify that yes indeed we have now seen that confirmed low after the one hour mitigation and we want to continue trading higher all right and then last but not least we have the limit order entry model. So with this particular entry model, this entry model works well for people who don't have the time to wait for a change of character on a lower time frame to occur. Let's say you have a nine to five job or let's say you might be busy on that particular trading day. This particular entry model can help you still get involved in the market under the same circumstances, but it is a it's a way more hands off or a hands free approach. And the way this particular entry model works is you still want to identify a valid mid to higher time frame um, demand or supply zone. So in this case, you can see that we have that one hour demand zone in here. But then within that one hour demand zone, you want to see whether or not you can refine it on your lower time frame. So you'll notice if I just move this one away, you'll notice that within this one hour demand zone, we have a refined 15 minute zone. All right. This 15 minute refined zone will be a zone identified on our lower time frame. All right. So if you are unable to wait for the change of character, because you'll see in this particular scenario, we actually have that FTC entry model playing out because you have your low, your internal lower high that fails to create here. It gives rise to your first entry opportunity in here, all right, which would then be a nice first riskier opportunity to get involved in the market there. But then if you don't want to trade that one, you can wait for a secondary break of structure in here to then trade higher. So if for whatever reason, you don't have the time to wait for one of the other entry models to play out. What you could instead do is you could look to trade from a refined lower time frame zone. So as price action pulls into this particular one hour demand zone, let's say you 
performed some market analysis at the start of your trading day, maybe just before the open of the London session. And before price action comes in to mitigate this one hour level, you manage to identify this 15 minute zone. What you can then do is you can simply put on a limit order right at the open of your lower time frame zone, which is refined obviously. And then you can simply look to trade it to whatever target you have in mind, all right? So all this particular entry model does is it allows you to get involved in the market if you don't have the time to wait for a either chalk entry model or an FTC entry model to play out. But notice how you can get involved in the market much earlier if you were to look to play the limit order entry model. Okay. Now, one thing that I need to uh, clear up very quickly is that if you're looking to play either the FTC or the change of character entry model, you can still place limit orders here. So after this particular change of character, you can still place a buy limit order here or a buy, a buy limit order here to get involved in the market, right? The reason I call this entry model a limit order entry model is because it's a hands-free approach. You can identify a refined zone, you can place your entry model and you can go about your day. If price action taps into the level, you get triggered. If it doesn't, you don't, you miss the trade, all right? Whereas with these two particular entry models, they are a little bit more hands-on. Remember, this is your lower time frame. So after this particular change of character occurs, you need to react very quickly in order to get your entries on in here and your entries on in here, okay? So three very simple entry models that you can use to get involved in the market. Definitely feel free to watch this video again. Um, I will be posting these entry models on my Instagram page so that you guys have a, a physical reference point for these entry models. See whether or not you can incorporate them in your current trading plan. Definitely backtest them to see how well um, they work and how often they play out. And remember, trading is a probabilistic game. So if you're always looking to trade high probability zones and high probability setups, chances are over a period of time, those high probability setups will lead to more wins than losses, all right? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure that you hit that like button and do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content. I appreciate you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.